When it comes to photography and film, there are a number of differences and similarities that make it so that photography is all around easier and requiring less skill than film. Uh, when it comes to photography and cinematography, they are very similar except that cinematography is basically temporal photography. It is photography over time, multiple times. And because of that, it has a great amount of like complexities that require a great amount of uh, issues to be accounted for and a greater skill set required to perform the required actions to make a film. So, if we're going to take it on the scale of amateur to professional, regardless, it is easier to take a photo than to make a film. If we're going to go on the low end, you've got your amateur DV people, you've got your, your digital compact cameras, you have your iPhones and your Instagram. They're very easy to use, they're very easy to put on the internet, to publish, but when you are shooting, you have to edit, you have to choose duration, you have to think about other aspects that aren't required in photography. If you go up to the high end with, say, like a professional lithography, printing, high-end digital photography, those are matched by high-end digital cinema, which require teams of more than 12 people often to make a single shot. So if you were to consider uh, skill set as a commodity, it requires 12 times as many more people to uh, make a film shot than a single photograph from a camera. So, if you were to take into just like the, the, the camera aspect, with a photographer, you have a single person and possibly a camera assistant to help them with the various needs of shooting. On a camera team in a fully fledged motion uh, film, you require at least one camera operator, one cinematographer, and one first camera assistant. If not, a second one or a third one. So, just to operate the camera requires more people. On top of that, you have the other aspects of film that aren't covered inside the camera. You have uh, the sound, which is another skill set altogether which isn't ever touched upon in photography. Uh, you have editing, you have a lot more post-production. Even if you were to take in compositing and whatnot, you have cinema equivalents which require longer and harder and, and more, I would say, desperate measures to be done in the same amount of time. So, in conclusion, it's easier to take a photo than to make a film. Okay. The negative team in this debate would, would first like to say that Daniel has made an, an error in his defining of skill. It's easier to take a photo, sure, anybody can take a photo, photo, everyone can point a camera with their iPhone, take the photo, put an Instagram filter on it to make it beautiful, but filmmaking requires skill because it requires more people. What we're doing here is, is conflating skill with labor. So if we, if we look at filmmaking, it is an enormously wonderful, democratic, collaborative process. We have a whole lot of people engaged in the production of one final product. And that final product is a film, whereas in photography you have one person with one resounding aesthetic vision, and that person makes, makes their final product, where, let, let's assume, without any, any input from anybody else. This, this, the, the production line kind of philosophy with making film is such that a whole bunch of people, as Daniel says, you, you need a whole bunch of people to even operate a camera, and that's not, it's not looking at the writer, the director, cin you know, cinematographer, and then all of you know, the cinematographer's posse, and then we're going to be looking at everybody in post-production. That, I mean, even if all these people have one skill, that skill is subsumed by this enormous big machine that is the filmmaking, and that's not even looking at the, the production companies and the, the, the marketing factors that even if one person, like let's, let's say the auteur, one person has this beautiful aesthetic vision of making a film, even if that person has that vision, that is more often than not disregarded because films are, firstly, nowadays to make money. So... The, 
it's, it, it's, it's difficult to look at this, this process of making film as, as at all similar to photography when we're conflating skill with labor. So we reject your definition of skill. Sure, photography is simple, anybody can take a photo, but filmmaking suddenly requires skill. Photography, filmmaking is simply, oh, <laughs> filmmaking is just a logical extension of, of taking a photo. So I don't understand why suddenly you're saying it's, it's, more, it's more skillful, there's more aesthetic kind of consideration or there's more talent needed. It's simply more perseverance needed, it's more patience that's needed. It's a whole lot more people getting together and having one small task. I mean, you can hardly say that these people are skillful. They have one thing to do. You have, you have one tiny thing to do and you do it and you are a part of an enormous collaborative medium. Thank you. All right, so first to rebut uh, what the negative team has said just there. They stated that just because it's a big team, that means there's a division of skill and therefore, you know, every skill is basically but no, irrelevant, it's tiny, it doesn't matter. Sure, okay. Photography, you know, have a camera, press a button, shoot, print, done. You're a photographer, well done, all right? Creative, congratulations. That's much harder. No, well done, yeah, that's a good argument. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, yeah, but, but okay. But going on from that as well, photography as well, well, filmmaking, sorry. Filmmaking is exactly photography, but done 25 frames a second. The difference between... A shit photographer and a good photographer is a good photographer is consistently good. Anyone can take a good photo. It's mostly luck, let's be honest. At some point, anyone will take a good photo. Even the worst photographer in the world, which happens to be my dad, by the way, <laughs> terrible photographer, still occasionally will come out with something good because he has that basic level of skill to know where to point a camera. And this is really the crux of the argument, I feel. Because the question assumes, if you get really pedantic with it, which, let's be honest, that's what debate and all is, is all about, uh, if you get really pedantic with the question, you need to basically say that photography can be done entirely absent of skill. If there's one even tiny bit of skill, then, that's, then it's on an equal par to filmmaking. So what we really ideally need for us to win the argument would be, say, an example of... I know someone who has no comprehension of photography, who's never seen a camera before, has no skill in said thing, uh, to take a great photo, you know. It's going to be hard to find that amongst the human race, so something like a monkey would be great. If I had, like, I don't know, photos of, that a monkey took. Oh, that's a monkey! This is a macaque in Indonesia that stole a photographer's camera, just, stole, just grabbed it, ran off into the bush and started just mashing with it, and it took a bunch of awesome selfies. <laughs> Let's be honest. And not only are they great photos, but like that's some of the best wildlife photos I've ever seen. This is not a trained monkey, this is an endangered species. There's not many photos of this at all. But this monkey has managed to take some of the best wildlife photos, probably, I don't know, I've ever seen. And it has no comprehension of skill, of photography, of anything like that. It's almost as if anyone can take a photo, you know? Like, is that the argument we're making? I feel like that's the argument we're making. <laughs> you could say that's luck, but I feel like that's the point. Like, it's anyone can take a photo. That's all there is to it. Infinite monkeys, infinite typewriters will eventually create Shakespeare, but that hasn't happened yet because that's really unlikely. And why like, I put a lot of monkeys on a lot of typewriters. <laughs> <laughs> One monkey. One camera, great photos. I rest my case. Um, okay, I want to, uh, two key definitional issues in this debate. Uh, following on from what Diana said, um, it seems to me, if I can follow this correctly, that the argument from the affirmative is that filmmaking requires skill because it's an art form based in duration or temporality. That a photograph is a still, and I can take a picture just by snapping. That there's no consideration of how does this picture relate to time or to some kind of environment. Um, look, I, I think there are pretty easy arguments against this. Temporality is not a question of skill. Temporality is a process of putting a camera in place, starting to record, and capturing what you capture. The temporal process is as automated as taking a still. 
if you're talking about montage and cutting things together, that's a different issue. But let me hold up my mobile phone for a second. Um, I actually made a, f uh, a, a film on this mobile phone. I've made several films on this mobile phone. I'm not a filmmaker by any stretch. Um, it's not a classical mode of filmmaking, and that's the second big definitional issue that the affirmative team have failed to grapple with. That filmmaking does not refer to some great moment of Bernardo Bertolucci in the early 1970s doing The Conformist. This is a big problem with their entire argument. Filmmaking refers to capturing imagery in temporal progression. So I completely accept that. The problem is, I can capture it on the mobile phone. I don't, have to, I don't have to cut it, I can interpolate it in complex ways, but I can do it in the confines of my own home with a computer. The key point our team would like to make is that you can't turn your back on the fact that filmmaking, if you're thinking about it as some kind of classical form, which seems to be what the affirmative team is thinking, has simply changed. I can play guitar, film myself, post it on YouTube, that is absolutely a film, and if we don't accept that, then we're all sort of pocket elitists, and we're all asking that filmmakers should be great artists. They're not great artists, right? They perhaps once were. I'm not rejecting that we might think of a history of filmmakers as an art form. It simply doesn't maintain in this current era. So the key points we want to make is, there is no distinction between a still, a photograph, and filmmaking. It's ludicrous to suggest that anybody can take a photo but uh, it takes great skill to make a movie. There's no such thing as greater specialization leads to greater skill. It devolves skill. That's been proven in any kind of film context of the last decade. And the last critical point I want to make is filmmaking has fundamentally changed to the point where I can get a monkey to shoot in duration. Monkeys make good <laughs> movies in duration. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and my uh, learned and esteemed colleagues in the negative. Let me just say, if the current political climate in Australia and in Sydney has taught us anything at the moment, it is that I can get up here and I can reel off a string of ad hominem arguments against my opposition <laughs> and I will win. But I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to draw attention to Bruce's ridiculous satchel. <laughs> <laughs> or Diana's sex appeal, or even the, uh, you know, I, I have kind of foreseen to the future here, but the uh, kind of blustering polysyllabic nonsense that I'm, that I'm sure is about to come out of, out of Adam's mouth when he follows me. I'm not going to do that. I won't make an ad hominem argument. What I will say is, quite clearly, my uh, friend from the, my first speaker from the negative isn't particularly good at mathematics. She was talking about the skill and equivalence between the skills of the two. So filmmaking requiring, you know, a set of skills and photography is requiring skill as well. But as we pointed out, if a shot in a, in a film requires 12 people, then that is 12 sets of skill. If a photograph requires one person, that is one skill. One times 12 is 12. One times one <laughs> is one. Twelve is eleven, you know, units greater than one. Therefore, quite clearly, uh, filmmaking requires more skill. I won't go into the kind of uh, almost insidious comment that she made about uh, a simple kind of skill as not being a real skill at all. I would argue that to clean a toilet probably requires quite a, quite a lot of skill. And I'm not, I'm not going to hear degrade um, or dement some kind of poor working man and toilet cleaner, as I'm sure they, they would enjoy doing. <laughs> the other point is, my rebuttal to Bruce is quite simply, when has a monkey taken a film? Maybe a monkey can take a good film, but give me an example of a monkey breaking into a Hollywood studio, stealing <laughs> a camera, making a film of something. You show me that, you put it up there, then, then we can kind of have a discussion about it. Uh, well, Michael Bay's a human being, though, not a, not a monkey. This, this whole idea of, of kind of aesthetic quality being somehow linked to a skill, I think, is the real area where the definitions have, gotten, have, have kind of become a bit confused from our opposition. 
There is nothing about a skill that implies that it has to have some kind of aesthetic quality. Take Instagram, for example. I can photograph my toe, which is deformed. You can come and look at it later if you want. And it will look beautiful when I put it in Instagram. There you go, Instagram. That's the answer. Oh, how the great have fallen. I just want to let you know that we may be called negative, but we're here, we're super positive. And can I also let you know that I have the singular advantage because I have the last say. Now, one thing that we've come from today is, and I will keep my words to single and two syllables where I can, uh, as, as a demonstration of our, dem uh, of our collaborative instinct. And I think that point, the collaborative instinct, is something that hasn't come up. And it's the sheer weight of numbers on the, uh, on the affirmative side. One thing we've learned here is that a monkey can take a good photograph. So there's this simple logic that the affirmative has missed out on here is we're not talking about the monkey's skill in uh, dialectical deduction or knowledge of Hegel, Kant or Schopenhauer. But we've simply located a simple fact playing into our own very warm and positive hands that there is skill. There is skill that there is a skill set that we're missing out on that we're perhaps not mining that chimpanzees and the mother monkeys may have. Now, irrespective <laughs> of all the other deficiencies, okay, all the other deficiencies, that's also within the scale of political correctness. We don't mean to be anti monkey. Okay, but within that skill set, we have actually located that monkeys have skill in taking a photograph. Okay. Now, I want to give a, let's, let's delve back into history here and let's go back into the realms of art, dare I say it. And <clears throat> this is when the art critic John Ruskin took um, the painter Whistler to, to court. He said he, he flew a bottle of paint in the uh, public's face. And there came a famous question and statement by Whistler, a well known wit and dandy. And, his, and, and the, the, uh, the, the barrister for the, um, for, the, uh, for the plaintiff said, do you think that, the, that, what are you paying for in this painting that is worth two and a half guinea, guineas? And Whistler said, you're paying for the experience of a lifetime. So I want to say to you that which, if we're talking about photos, are we talking about good photos? Because one of the things the affirmative, in which the affirmative excuse my negativity, because we are very positive people, in which the, the affirmative have dismally and abysmally failed is to distinguish between the skill in producing a good or bad film. A recent one, perhaps, is also Diana. There's been a lot of skill being put into a bad film. Now, in terms of an economic model, that is something to be sort of laughed and sneezed at. Okay? So a lot of skill has come for naught. So I just want to also leave you with another little historical, historical model, is that if we're dealing with weight of numbers and mass, hey, China is the most skillful nation on earth. Or should we remember the Second World War, in which the, um, the, the, the Russians outnumbered the Germans 10 to 1, and it took five um, uh, soldiers to kill one German. That's not to say I'm pro-German, okay? I'm pro-everything, and I'm pro-monkey. Awesome. All right, we had some amazing speakers there. Um, so we're going to decide the winner through um, noises coming out of your mouths. So um, let's hear it for the affirmative. Yeah! Pretty good. All right, let's hear it for the negative. Yeah! <laughs> um, I think we're going to have to give that to the affirmative. So please give our speakers a hand. Thanks very much for coming along.